Welcome to Canada Report this week. I'm Lona Vitelli. Thank you for joining us. Coming up in the next half hour, the police chief and 99 officers get ready for the body worn video cameras. And Ride on Bus service celebrates its 40th anniversary. But first, we begin with some development news. A groundbreaking ceremony was held this week for the first redevelopment project under the County Executive's Smart Growth Initiative. My MC Media's Sonia Burke joins us from the site of this future urban village at the intersection of Crabs Branch Way and Shady Grove Road. Sonia? That's right, Lorna. This new neighborhood going up behind me is a public-private partnership between EYA and Montgomery County. EYA executives were joined by Montgomery County officials for the official groundbreaking at this new transit-oriented community. Construction is now beginning at the 45-acre site that was once an industrial area. We're excited about this because this is really the culmination of the County Executive Smart Growth Initiative to leverage existing county assets that needed a lot of work or replacement uh, and, and convert that advantage into a private development uh, strategy with a partner that is truly creating transit-oriented development. What we're trying to do in Montgomery County to build for the future, to have locations nearby where you have transportation metro next, next door, you have all the other amenities, shopping, work, all in one central location. Uh, this is something that really uh, is an epitome of what we see in terms of smart growth development. The fact that the county is investing in a uh, community park and an elementary school site, and best of all, the access to transportation. The fact that you're a six minute walk literally onto the metro platform from where we stand. Already, developers say there has been great interest in this new neighborhood that'll feature townhomes, rental homes, offices, and retail space. We had over a thousand people pre-register online. Um, the first weekend, I think we had 250 to 300 people through the sales office itself. We already have four units under contract. I'm very proud of the diversity of what we see in terms of the housing stock, its location, the way it is uh, planned to be constructed. It's all very good in my opinion. Soon, officials say infrastructure improvements will begin on the road adjacent to the site. The uh, infrastructure improvements to Crabs Branch Way will be, uh, begin this year. Uh, and will take a, a little less than a year to accomplish, and that will uh, be taking place while EYA was also uh, building their the first couple blocks of townhouse units. You can find more information about Westside at Shady Grove Metro online. For County Report This Week, I'm Sonia Burke. The Montgomery County Police Department is preparing to test body-worn cameras this summer. Montgomery County Police Chief Tom Manger said the plan is for 100 patrol officers to pilot the program at stations across the county, and he plans to be one of them. I do plan to wear one. Um, I've said from the start that I, I intend to wear one. I'd, I'd like to um, just get some idea. Now, obviously, I'm not involved in, in a lot of arrest situations anymore, but, um, but I, uh, I do have a fair amount of contact with the public. Um, I still make traffic stops occasionally, and, and um, so I, I do intend to wear one because I want to uh, just get, get some idea about uh, what it's like, if it changes my behavior, if it makes me think differently, if I'm you know, less likely to react instinctively to something. Um, all those are questions that, um, that I have in my own mind about uh, the, the impact these body-worn cameras will have. So I'd like to experience that firsthand just to see what, how, how it affects me. Each year, thousands of veterans return from active duty looking to re-enter civilian life. But sometimes that transition can be tough, especially when it comes to finding a job. But at a recent job fair, especially geared towards our service men and women, there was plenty of good news. Susan Kennedy has a story. The Career After Military Outreach event was held at the Silver Spring Civic Center and was sponsored by the DC Society for Human Resource Management. It was an opportunity for local veterans to connect with companies who are committed to supporting our servicemen. We have more than 46,000 veterans in Montgomery County. 
We're proud of their service to the United States. Um, and it, for the most part, the skills that you learn in the armed services are transferable to the private sector, but it's an adjustment. Uh, when men and women come home from their service abroad, it takes some time to get situated in the private sector, but we are so grateful for what they've done that we want to do everything we can to assist them to make that smooth transition. Several companies committed to hiring vets were on hand at the job fair to talk to candidates about roles they had available. Carol Leary is preparing to re-enter civilian life. She told us it's a tough transition, but the job fair has inspired her to take action. Because you're not sure how your current skills will transition over into a civilian workforce. Um, a lot of the recruiters here, um, they've, you know, said, hey, you know, you're, you're good at X, Y, Z. That translate into, you know, the, these different areas that we're looking for. You know, you might not even know that. So it's, it's really helpful being out here. Steve Rice knows what it is like to make that transition from active duty to civilian life. He was wounded in Iraq and after months of rehabilitation was back in the job market. My situation about when I got hurt and how I gained employment. He came to the job fair to offer support to his fellow vets. It can be tough, he says, but he tells them to never give up hope. I look at myself as something that's made it after uh, suffering a severe injury in war, hopefully motivate others to, to stick with it and keep, keep fighting to gain employment, keep fighting to be happy and reintegrate into, into life after service. In 2008, Montgomery County adopted a hiring preference for veterans. Both Leventhal and Councilmember Tom Hucker believe it's important for the county to show its appreciation to those men and women who served. I come from a, um, a family where my, my grandfather, my father, and my brother are all veterans. It's really good that we have programs like this to connect our, our veterans um, to so many jobs that are available that people wouldn't find out about except for events like this. And for Carol Leary, the day was leading to the opening of some new doors. Uh, looks like it will. Looks like it will. In Silver Spring, I'm Susan Kennedy for County Report This Week. The clubhouse Alicia World in Silver Spring was packed with residents for its sixth annual Health and Wellness Expo. Executive Ike Leggett was there to also celebrate the 50th anniversary of the passage of the Older Americans Act and services for seniors in Montgomery County. We're also trying to do much more in terms of transportation because people need to have that sense of worth to get out and do more things than they can on their own. And so we've enhanced the amounts of money that we provide for various forms of mobility and for trips for seniors as well. And one of the other things that we are looking at and we've advanced is that people want, many people want to simply age in place. So there are programs and services now to lower the cost as we retrofit home to make them much more accessible to seniors. Are you over 50 and looking for a new job? Recruiters from dozens of employers will be looking for new job seekers at the 50 Plus Employment Expo being held on June 1st at the Marriott Bethesda North Hotel and Conference Center. The 50 and older crowd will have free access to help on interviewing skills, online applications, and resume writing. Recently, Mickey Gordon from the Jewish Council for the Aging was on Seniors Today and told us why the expo is so important. So what we need for people to do is to learn new techniques into job searching. So we have a seminar on LinkedIn. We have one on how to prepare a resume, even to down to the point of, I know it sounds old fashioned, but people still like to get a thank you note after they meet with someone. Oh, that's so great. And right. just the eye contact and dressing for the interview and practice sessions, how, what questions might be asked, how to present yourself. You know, many years ago, a resume could have been four or five pages with a lovely picture. We don't want that for the senior. Right. We want to be able to, you know, target yeah. the highlight, their, their, their talents, their skills, their tasks to help them, you know, re-enter the job market. The expo will be held June 1st at the Marriott North Bethesda Hotel and Conference Center from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. For more information, visit the Jewish Council for the Aging's website. When we come back, get ready to celebrate Memorial Day in Rockville. The hometown holidays promise to be even bigger and better this year. And the city of Tacoma Park celebrates its 125th anniversary. County Report This Week will be right back.
In Montgomery County, we have a goal to reduce waste and recycle 70% of all waste by 2020. By recycling and reducing waste, we save natural resources and make our community even better. So recycle at home, work, school, everywhere, and keep recycling going. For more information, call the Montgomery County, Maryland Division of Solid Waste Services at 311 or visit montgomerycountymd.gov slash recycling. Keep it going. Recycle more now. Welcome back to Counter Report This Week. I'm Lorna Vigili. Mark your calendar. Rockville will be presenting the Hometown Holidays Music Festival. Taste of Rockville and the annual Memorial Day celebration and parade this Memorial Day weekend. Rockville 11's Christine Rice has a preview. Are you looking for something to do this Memorial Day weekend? Join the City of Rockville, the 27th Annual Hometown Holidays Music Festival and 71st Annual Memorial Day Ceremony and Parade held on Saturday, May 23rd through Monday, May 25th. Since 1989, the City has held Hometown Holidays over Memorial Day weekend, offering music, food and fun and ending with the Memorial Day Ceremony and Parade. Throughout the weekend, guests can expect to hear a variety of entertainment and will feature uh, live performances on four stages from more than 30 local, regional, and national bands. There is a diverse lineup of music with genres including Americana, reggae, blues, brass band, funk, folk, and more. The event will also feature the Taste of Rockville, um, which showcases some of Rockville's best restaurants who are offering um, tastes of their menu um, throughout the weekend. There are 25 participating restaurants offering tasty bites from sushi, chicken wings, and dumplings to Italian ice and cupcakes. Tickets can be purchased at the event. The festival offers family-friendly entertainment and amusements. The popular Hometown Holidays Beach will return this year, offering the chance to build a sandcastle with your little ones. Where we actually uh, bring in a bunch of sand into uh, the Bud Light Beach stage and set up some tables and umbrellas, um, and it's a really good time, place to put your feet and relax. The annual Memorial Day Ceremony and Parade will take place on Monday, May 25th. The ceremony will begin at 9 a.m. Um, on Monday and will feature uh, music by the Rockville Concert Band, um, a speech by our Grand Marshal, and then at 10.30, the parade will start through Town Square. More than 60 groups will be participating in the parade, including marching bands, floats, clowns, and community groups. Mark your calendars and tell your friends and family to meet you at Hometown Holidays on May 23rd through May 25th. For a full entertainment lineup and event information, visit rockvillemd.gov slash HTH. In celebration of 125 years since incorporation, the City of Tacoma Park hosted a kickoff event that featured former and current city officials, staff, and residents of the city. It was a night of community reflection and education. Regina Rees has the story. It's a very special occasion. We're celebrating the 125th anniversary of Tacoma Park. That's right, the city is 125 years old. It really takes the involvement of people in the community to make things happen. And you can work on things in a vacuum, but it doesn't really get anywhere. It can take a long time, but it's when the people who live here really want something to happen that they can push and make it happen. Uh, Sam Abbott had strong feelings about the nuclear weapons industry and he got the city council to declare Tacoma Park a nuclear free zone. This kind of anniversary brings to mind not just the history of involvement and how citizens have participated and pushed and worked for so many different things in Tacoma Park, you know, fighting the freeway, the nuclear freeze, rent stabilization. Also that spirit of involvement that I hope continues. And that's where I think the anniversary should be used as an opportunity for how we engage younger people, new people to Tacoma Park to continue this effort. Declaring Tacoma Park nuclear free, Tacoma Park a tree city, and creating historic districts continue to be signs up all over town. And I'm glad I was in a community that kind of has the, the tolerance and the caring for other human beings that we have in Tacoma Park. I actually lived here when we had the 100th anniversary, but that was even before I was on council. I actually moved into the city in 1985, and so I remember 1990 when we had the 100th anniversary, and I just hope I'm here for the 150th. The letter from President Obama just recognized that we have a special community and that uh, it was really good that we were taking time to celebrate this 125th anniversary and that uh, he was sure we would do great things in the future. 
Do you have a deck in your backyard that has not been inspected for quite some time? Well, take advantage of this opportunity. May is Building Safety Month and the Department of Permitting Services celebrates by offering free existing deck inspections. We have a yearly maintenance checklist on things that we look at for things as simple as taking a screwdriver and touching the wood to see if it sinks way in, whether the wood is still good. We look at the areas where the deck is fastened and supported to make sure that they're right. We'll get up and shake the rails a little bit and see if they need to be in pickets to see if they've come loose over a period of time. If you are a county homeowner and wish to have your deck inspected, just call 311 to schedule an appointment. Inspections are intended to prevent accidents and homeowners will not be fined for any damage to the decks or building violations. Right on, turns 40. That's correct. The county's bus service has been in existence for four decades and to celebrate this anniversary, County Executive Ike Leggett hosted a week of special events. One of those celebrations included proclaiming May 11th as Right on Day alongside elected officials and a bus operator that has been a driver since the 70s. There are some unique things about this and what we get from it. Uh, it really connects us to the broader region in transportation. That's one significant component uh, with the entire metro system. Uh, it will help us in years to come to connect us with a purple line that we believe is coming and for the rapid transit system as well. So we will continue to grow and continue to expand. Right on began operations in 1975 with 20 buses. Today, the system has 343 buses. 75% of those are energy efficient vehicles. And people take 86,000 trips on a typical weekday. And the Ride on Bus system collected 8,767 pounds of food this year during its annual Give and Ride food drive that took place the week of April 19th. Bus passengers received free rides by donating canned and non-perishable food for Montgomery County school students. All donations were sent to the Mana Food Center, a nonprofit organization that distributes food to the county's neediest families. Coming up on County Report this week, the college holds a STEM conference just for girls. And some MCPS fifth graders take an interesting challenge. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. The largest graduating class in the history of Montgomery College will receive diplomas at the annual commencement ceremony May 22nd on the Rockville campus. The class of 2015 has nearly 3,000 students eligible to receive either a degree or certificate. You can watch the ceremony live and online at montgomerycollege.edu slash commencement. Raptors track and field took home four championships at the NJCAA Nationals. Kiana Daly took the discus and shot put titles, Brianna Rhodes finished first in women's high jump, and the men's 4x100 relay team also won gold. Overall, the MC men finished third in the country and the MC women fifth. And registration for summer and fall semester classes at MC is underway, so now is the time to sign up for the classes you want when you want them. Register in person at any of our three campuses or online. Welcome back to County Report this week. I'm Lorna Vigili. Montgomery College is helping to inspire the next generation of scientists, space explorers, and doctors. Danielle Stesky has the full story. I would like to be an obstetrician. I want to be an allergist when I grow up. Sabri Abdullah and Priya Kaura were among dozens of middle school students that came to participate in the seventh annual Every Girl Can conference. Every Girl Can is a fun, creative enrichment program for middle school girls to help them to find their voice, to develop confidence, and to know that they can do whatever they set their minds to and that they work hard to achieve. They spent their Saturday at the Health Science Center on Montgomery College Tacoma Park Silver Spring campus attending workshops. 33%. Listening and inquiring from successful women in STEM or science, technology, engineering, and math. What life achievement has influenced you to become this, become this great woman you are? Also, what was your first science project? 
Before talking about their experience with robotics, chemistry labs, and engineering, the Penlada group performed familiar songs to the audience. Senior research scientist Dr. Christina Ricci has some great advice for girls who are interested in pursuing a career in STEM. My advice would be to start in science and mathematics early and realize that you belong there and you are just as awesome as anybody else and to just stay driven and motivated. Congresswoman Donna Edwards, who sits on the House Committee on Science, Space and Technology, attended the event along with First Lady of Montgomery County, Catherine Leggett. I think it's really important to, first of all, dream and then to believe. You need education, you need to work really hard, and you need a spiritual compass. Also, I think you need the village to keep you going, to lift you up, and to show you that you can. The next annual Every Girl Can conference will take place next year on May 6. For Country Report this week in Silver Spring, I'm Danielle Steski. Last month, the Montgomery County Public Schools Education Foundation put on a contest with students on one side and adults on the other. But as it turns out, everybody won. MCPS TV has the story. It was a night of questions, answers, and fun at the third annual Are You Up to the Fifth Grade Challenge. The event held at the AFI Silver Theater and Cultural Center, starred three local celebrity contestants answering questions straight out of the MCPS curriculum. Helping the contestants out were fifth graders from 27 MCPS elementary schools. The event was sponsored by the Montgomery County Public Schools Educational Foundation to celebrate MCPS students and raise awareness of instructional programs. Our county uh, citizens make a tremendous investment in our schools and through this event we're able to show them what their investment is yielding. The evening of fun was hosted by Hall Davidson, the director of the Discovery Educator Network. The contestants were Mark Drury, a construction executive, Robin Puddock, an architect, and Carissa Stanley, a real estate banker. I thought tonight's event was fabulous. I think it was great to be up there with the kids. It was great to hear, see their collaboration on these answers and putting their heads together and working as a team. They're just the kinds of kids we need in, on our team to build buildings and, and make this economy go. As for answering fifth grade questions. It was a lot of fun. I thought some of my questions were very hard and I thought some of the questions of my contestants, my fellow contestants, were also very challenging. Those fifth graders knew what they were doing though. The contestants won a total of $12,000 in MCPS Foundation grants for local elementary schools. And for the student participants, I got to make new friends and you know, I learned new things. I think it was like a really fun thing to be in. Um, it was very educational. I think MCPS fifth graders are up to the fifth grade challenge. Twelve scholars received their scholarships during the 20th anniversary of the Bernie Scholars Award program during a celebration at the Silver Spring Civic Building. This program was established in 1996 to help residents of subsidized or affordable housing fulfill their academic dreams. Executive Ike Leggett extended a proclamation to the program founder, and Dr. Darian Pollard, president of Montgomery College, was the keynote speaker. Scholarships transform lives by affording individuals with the opportunity to satisfy the want, to overcome the need, and to propel to new and revitalized energies about their future and that of their family. Since its creation, the Bernie Scholarships have assisted 347 scholars with over $384,000 in scholarships. Coming up next on County Report this week, the fifth annual Taste the World in Fenton Village. And the outdoor pools are about to open. The county is planning a water safety day. Stay with us, County Report this week is coming right back. Did you know there are more than 10,000 county government phone numbers? But there's only one number you need to remember for non-emergency calls, 311. MC311 is Montgomery County government's online telephone information system. 
Need information? Have a problem or complaint? Trying to locate a county government facility? Call 311. The call center is open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. The website is available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Spend your Memorial Day weekend with the City of Rockville at the Hometown Holidays Music Festival. Featuring live music for more than 30 bands playing everything from Americana to New Orleans Brass. Enjoy food from the taste of Rockville, have fun with the family, and even put your feet in the sand at the Hometown Holidays Beach. On Monday, join us for the 71st Annual Memorial Day Ceremony and Parade. Drive Metro Biker Walk to the Hometown Holidays Music Festival. See you in Rockville Town Center! Welcome back to Counter Report this week. I'm Lorna Fagelli. A restaurant crawl event brought more than 1,000 people to the streets of downtown Silver Spring. Alini Barros reports. I'm in mean, Silver Spring at an annual restaurant crawl where visitors end up tasting the world right here at Phantom Village. They come hungry, get a passport, and head to the fifth annual Taste the World in Fenton Village to try a taste of the diverse ethnic restaurants in downtown Silver Spring. I'm ashamed to say my very first time at Taste the World. Uh, there are a lot of restaurants here that I've heard of, uh, but there are a lot of new places that I haven't been to before, and I'm really excited to get a chance to try them for the first time. More than 1,000 visitors get the chance to sample appetizers and tasting plates for $5 or less from the 27 restaurants that participated in the event. This Fenton Village area is just really growing with new restaurants almost every week. The business community has actually said presente, that is, I've actually said, hey, we're here in a big way. Instead of browsing vendors in one central place, participants walk the community at their own pace to find out more about the area some people call the hidden gem of Silver Spring. After each stop, they get a stamp in their passport for a chance to win prizes. I went to Fire Station, got some wings, then I came here to, because I've always wanted to try this place. I've seen it on Groupon numerous amount of times, so now is the perfect time to try it. It's my third stop already, yeah, and I just, like, did one block, so I, I have, you know, a couple more blocks to go. Local business owners say the event provides an opportunity to support small businesses and builds a stronger community. It brings uh, a lot of the local people. Uh, to kind of venture out and see what the community is about and what the small business and the local community offer. We just want to bring a little flavor of spice or spice of flavor to, um, to the festival. I love doing the Taste of the World. I get to meet so many different people. You get to hear all like the cool comments people have on other restaurants. It's a chance for people to get to taste real Greek authentic food. For County Report this week, I'm Eleni Barros. Montgomery County Recreation, along with the cities of Gaithersburg and Rockville, will host a free Water Safety Day event on Friday, May 29th from 3.30 to 6.30 p.m. at the Water Park at Boar Park on South Frederick Avenue in Gaithersburg. As outdoor community pools prepare to open over the Memorial Day weekend, the timing is perfect to focus on water safety to avoid unnecessary accidents. The event will include information booth, lifeguard demonstrations, the proper use of personal flotation devices, how to safely assist someone struggling in the water, and the importance of sunscreen. Anyone attending the Water Safety Day who visits the various information booths can stay and enjoy a free swim. Let's meet our pet of the week. Kathy Stanhope joins us from the Montgomery County Animal Services and Adoption Center with more. Kathy? This week for your pet of the week, I have something special. I have one bunny sitting in my lap, but we have six of them in all. And they're just two months old, and they are the most gorgeous color copper that you could possibly imagine. So come visit our rabbits that we have here at Montgomery County Animal Services and Adoption Center. You can give us a call at 240-773-5900 or visit us on the web at Montgomery County Animal Services and Adoption Center.gov. We have a lot of animals that are really looking forward to going home with you. And with that, we close this edition of County Report this week. Remember to like us on Facebook and to join us again at this time every week for a look at what's going on inside Montgomery County. I'm Lorna Vigili and thank you for watching.